Does marriage counseling really work? My name's Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation and I used to be a divorce mediator. So I know for a fact that marriage counseling doesn't work. How do I know? Well, all of my clients came from marriage counselors. And when I began to help people and I wanted to start with one particular client. I wanted to start because my logical mind said, because I am good at negotiating, I'm good at communication, I'm good at mediating, that I, that would be most of the problems with marriages. But it's not. And so it's very interesting about why marriage counseling doesn't work. And it's important for you to know, first of all, in a nutshell, not any two marriage counselors use the same prescription. They all have their own thing going. It's just how it works. Many marriage counselors started off as kids out of uh, college. They went to counseling school and they started right away working with people and they'd never even been married. And their high rate of divorce as a group should be a warning sign. But they're good people. Marriage counselors are good people. They just don't know any better. There are some things that get in the way for them. So why doesn't it work? Okay, number one, they don't understand marriage. Marriage is not majorly complex, although there's a lot of moving parts, but their training almost forget, forbids them from considering anything that is outside of the paradigm of what they've learned, which is a very atheistic, like keep that spiritual stuff away from me kind of thing. And which doesn't really make sense, right? Because you as an individual, me, all of us, we're a blend of spiritual and material. We are, we are, we're souls. We have a body, we have a mind, and it's blended together. It, it's in what we call, we, me, and the counselors I have, we call it the ego. But marriage counselors call the ego something completely different. It's, for them, it's a Freudian term. And basically what happens is that all they wanna do is try and help the couple work out a particular problem or two problems. And maybe it's a problem with one or the other of you. And that doesn't work. It doesn't work because it doesn't get to the root of your marriage. It doesn't get to the bottom line. Why did you get married? You got married in order to be happy. And there was sort of a sub part to that, an understanding that you would not just get happy, but you would get happier every day. You would feel more love all of the time. That your marriage would grow. That you would grow as an individual. You as an individual would be happier. Your partner would be happier. Life would get better. That's your expectation. And so when you go to marriage counseling, they don't start there. They start with, okay, so what's wrong? Well, what does that do? It sets this competition up between you. Well, who's more wrong than the other? Who's the bigger creep? Who's the one who's really hurting the marriage? When the fact is, this is a fact. Neither of you know anything about marriage. Here's another fact. Neither do marriage counselors. And this is a huge problem. So it doesn't work. Now, there's processes galore on the internet now. And there's relationship coaches. And they all rely on the old things but some of the courses are a little better than others. They're not great, 
They're not where we are with our course because they don't go all the way. But they do work on the do's and the don'ts. They help, for instance, the women who are constantly complaining to their husbands. They learn that that's only going to push them away. Great. But it's then they're stuffing it their whole life that they don't get to complain because all the therapists in the world, all the articles and the magazines are talking about, you have to express yourself, which by the way is not true. Except you do need to express yourself as the lover, the best friend, who your partner married. And that doesn't get taught by anyone. So marriage counseling, I wish I could say it worked. Because if it worked, I would have stayed as a divorce mediator, making a lot of money, and only working with those couples who really, truly should get a divorce. There are some people who should get a divorce. But instead, I found that of all the people that I worked with, and I went through just in my mind, but I went through it in my mind and I thought, okay, now that I know what I know and I know how to help couples stay together and really turn their marriage around, who could I have not saved? I don't think there was anyone. I mean, there are some borderlines, couples where things were way out there. I mean, way out there. But for the most part, I think I could have saved everyone. In fact, when I started working with my process, first place I went was Second Saturday Divorce Support Group for women. That's where I got my clients. And I saved so many marriages there. Don't try marriage counseling. I really advise against it. <clears throat> to this day, we get emails because we have a free counseling service. It's not marriage counseling. But you could write in with what's going on and you'll get an honest response. You want to really think about what's going to make our marriage happy again. What's going to put us back on the track we were on before we got married? When we were looking forward to ever increasing happiness. And ask yourself what went wrong. That's much better than marriage counseling. Marriage counseling is going to hurt you. So I started to talk about this one email we got recently where the husband said, uh, my wife went to her therapist and the therapist said, there's no hope for our marriage unless I confess to all of my sins. What a crazy notion. Now, that's not necessarily reflective of all therapists, obviously not. But there's enough out there with some really crazy ideas that simply hurt your marriage more than help it. Please look around. Think deeply before you go. And if you do go, and if you say, well, you know, okay, that's an interesting perspective, there's also a video I produced that talks about what you should look for in a marriage counselor. So at least take a look at that. So you can write down, before you go in, you could write down some expectations. You know, one of the things that I really believe in is that whoever you hire for whatever purpose, you should be clear about what your expectations are. Don't you agree? If you go to a dentist and you have a toothache, you expect that toothache to be gone. You go to the doctor and you have a cold, you expect some medicine to help you alleviate the symptoms. And we could go down the list. You call a plumber, electrician, you pull into a garage because your car isn't working well. You have in your mind clear-cut expectations. But when you go to marriage counseling, people have been taught not to have expectations, to see how it goes. And that's insane. 
frankly, it's crazy. Why shouldn't you have expectations? Why shouldn't you? You don't go to marriage counseling just to sit and talk about your problems. You go because you want happiness. And you don't want happiness six months from now. You might give it a week or two, but you want it right away. And you should. You should have that happiness. You got married to be happy. If it's not functioning, it's probably not that complicated as to why. Now, it's true that most people wait too long, at least to come to us. But even when they wait too long, happiness is the first item that I want people to expect, to get self-contained, to find your own space. People don't know this, but I'm going to share with you that marriage is a spiritual path for each of us as individuals that we do together. And we do it in a hermitage, a cloister, where there's only two of you. So it shouldn't be that difficult to get along. It shouldn't be a big deal to make each other happy. So that's the first item on our agenda. Even if you're taking the course by yourself. You're supposed to be happy. You're a soul. You're supposed to be happy. That's not a requirement, by the way. We're not a church. We don't go, you must be happy. No, we show you how to find that inner happiness. And it's concrete. It's tangible. You may not be able to touch it, but you certainly feel it. So do your best before you go to marriage counseling and the worst part of marriage counseling isn't that it costs money. What's wrong with spending money to save your marriage? It's a good idea. The worst part is that the underlying expectation that you have that your marriage will be healed is set aside and you don't meet it. So what happens? You become discouraged. It'd be like milking a cow and no milk comes out. You get discouraged. <laughs> yes, I have milk cows, as a matter of fact. And there is more to it than just yanking. So you do need marriage help if you're having difficulty. But I strongly suggest you avoid the marriage counseling. Does it really work? No, it really doesn't work, marriage counseling. All right. I hope you got some benefit from this. If nothing else, I hope you're thinking twice about booking with a marriage counselor. And they're sweet. The good ones are sweet talkers. You'll feel confident, but they won't help your marriage. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. There's lots of videos that might help you. If that's not helping out right into our counselors. Get some clear-cut advice. They won't mislead you. We're very, very clear about that. No one is paid a bonus or a commission if they suggest you take the course or get a book. We're a nonprofit foundation and we're here to help you. Share the video. Share it with your spouse so you're both on the same page. And God bless you and blessings to your spouse and, and blessings to your family. Thank you for taking your time with me. I hope I was helpful. Take care.